why did I just buy an FX30? Well, really for YouTube, I kind of wanted to return to my roots a little bit and cover APS-C cameras and lenses. They're much more affordable and I want to be able to confidently recommend APS-C cameras for beginners. In most cases, you can get an APS-C camera or lens for about half the price of its full frame equivalents. And it got me asking a question that I haven't thought about in a while. Is full frame really necessary? That's what we're gonna answer today, but we gotta start off with what really is the difference between full frame and APS-C? Well, it's the sensor size. A full frame Sony sensor is 50% larger than a Sony APS-C sensor, meaning you need to apply a crop factor of 1.5 times to most lens measurements. So let's talk about how that crop factor and the sensor size difference affects your photos and videos. The first thing that comes to mind is focal length or zoom. If you throw a 50 millimeter lens on a full frame camera like the Sony a7S III, this is the field of view you get. But if you throw that same lens on an APS-C camera like the FX30, then this is the field of view you'd get. And you'll notice that that's more zoomed in than the full frame sensor by 1.5 times to be exact. Now let's say you want a true 24 millimeter focal length for your APS-C camera. What you would need to get then is something like a 16 millimeter lens. One I've talked about extensively before that I still think is a great lens, the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4. So going wider is pretty easy for both full frame and APS-C cameras, but the opposite isn't true. Take a look at the Sony 300 f2.8 or 400 f2.8 or even the 600 f2.8. And when you look at the prices, it's really expensive. So if you're on a full frame camera and you want to get that super far reach, you're about to spend a lot of money. But if you want that reach and you shoot on an APS-C camera, you get that 1.5X crop for free. So a 24 to 70 is actually a 36 to 105 on an APS-C camera and your 70 to 200 is actually 105 to 300 millimeters on your APS-C camera. So this means that if you're somebody that shoots nature or wildlife or sports, then an APS-C camera can actually be of benefit to you. And you might be wondering, does a crop sensor affect the bokeh or depth of field? And the answer is no and yes. Here's what I mean. This is a shot I got from the a7S III with the 50 millimeter f1.4 GM. Here's another shot I got from the FX30 with the 50 millimeter f1.4 GM, taken from the exact same position. If you take a look at the bokeh in both of these shots, you'll notice that the depth of field is nearly identical. That's because crop sensor doesn't mean somehow your images now just have a bigger depth of field and your backgrounds are less blurry. Not directly. Here's a shot of a plant with the a7S III with the 50 millimeter f1.4 GM. Now here's another shot with the same lens on the FX30, but this time what I did differently was that I moved the FX30 back so that the subject will remain the same size in the frame with a similar composition. Now you're going to notice the compression on the background is more intense because the 50 millimeter after a 1.5 X crop factor is closer to like a 75 millimeter, but th that's not the focus here. Take a look at the bricks in the background of the shot. You'll see that the depth of field is thinner with the full frame camera. The APS-C camera's background is less blurry. Why? Because your depth of field gets larger the further away the point of focus is from the camera. And since you have a 1.5X crop factor, you're forced to be further away with the same focal length lenses to get the same composition, which results in less blurry backgrounds at the same aperture or f-stop. And as a general rule, if you're looking for that intense subject separation, that super thin depth of field to really pull your subjects off the screen and away from the background, then full frame is really always gonna win in this department. Another thing that gets often brought up in this comparison of full frame to APS-C is the low light performance of each sensor. The larger sensors in full frame cameras really give them an advantage here, letting them gather more light and produce an overall lower amount of digital noise. The easiest way for me to show you is to just show you. Here are two shots in a dimly lit room at ISO 800, the FX30's base ISO, where it should perform the best. And even here, you see a bit more noise when compared to the same shot from the A7S III. As you go up through the ISO range, both images get more noisy, but the FX30 gets it worse. Then we move up to ISO 12800, where the A7S III has a second base ISO and cleans up a ton. Now, when you compare the APS-C camera, the FX30, to the full frame camera, the A7S III, you can really see the difference like night and day. 
Now, when the image is properly exposed, both images look great, but the versatility and the ability to be able to shoot in difficult lighting environments is what makes the full frame sensor a much more useful tool when you're on location shooting for client jobs, where sometimes, yes, you'll have control over the lighting, but other times you have to shoot on the fly and being able to crank that ISO, knowing that you're not gonna get a ton of digital noise is a huge win for full frame sensors. And lastly, what about the image quality or the sharpness of the image between full frame and APS-C? Can you really tell the difference? Here's where I'm gonna have a little bit of fun. I'm gonna let you decide. I'm gonna show you four shots. Three of them are shot on full frame cameras. One on the A7S III, one on the ZV-E1, and one on the A7C Mark II, while one of them will be shot on an APS-C camera, the FX30. So let me go ahead and show them to you first. This is camera number one. This is camera number two. Here's camera number three. And this is camera number four. Pause the video and go into the comments and let me know your guess on which one is the FX30, the APS-C camera. Okay, now that you've done that, let's find out the answer. The FX30 is camera two. I'm gonna wager that most people couldn't tell. And I purposely made it a little bit more difficult by moving the tripod just a little bit between each of the shots. So that way it wouldn't be as easy as picking out like, okay, which one doesn't look exactly framed the same way. On top of that, your sharpness and your image quality is gonna depend on a lot of factors. Things like the digital noise level from your ISO, what lens you're using. And one that kind of really plays a lot into it is megapixels because that's the raw data that's able to be compressed down into the photos and videos that you see. So if we're really splitting hairs here, full frame cameras technically win because they'll usually have a higher megapixel count, which will translate to a little bit more detail in your photos and videos. So far, when looking at full frame versus APS-C, Full frame wins most of the time. So APS-C just lacks behind just a little bit here and there. Not by much, but just enough. But I think the biggest factor of all between these two systems is gonna be the cost. And here's a real world truth. If you're just getting your feet wet into photography, videography, making content online, APS-C is gonna win by a landslide on cost alone. Here's an example. For around $2,600, you could have a Sony a6700, a Sigma 16mm f1.4, a Sigma 30 f1.4, and a Sigma 56 f1.4. Or you could buy a great camera like the Sony a7C Mark II, but with a pretty meh kit lens for $2,500. But even in that example, there's really no one size fits all correct answer on which one you should go with. It really depends on how far you wanna dabble into it. What do you wanna learn about first? Like different lenses and focal lengths, or do you wanna dive in first with full frame so you have slightly lower digital noise? And then how much do you plan on investing in the future? Do you just wanna drop two, three grand and not spend any more on camera gear for the next few years, which would be nice. Or you're the type of person like me, unfortunately, where you buy gear and then one year later, you're like, I need the newest, shiniest, nicest thing on the market, right? Like depending on which one of those you are, your answer is gonna be different. For me, full frame is the right choice because I shoot a lot of client work. I work in a lot of different lighting environments. So first of all, the versatility of having that low light capability in my video cameras is super important. On top of that, I like having the higher megapixel counts because when I shoot my client work, I'm not perfect. Some shots are a little askew. I like having that extra megapixel count in order to crop in and straighten images out. And that's just to name a few of the benefits of full frame systems. But again, that doesn't mean I couldn't do what I do now with just APS-C cameras. I started my photography business with the Sony A6000 series cameras and used that system for a really long time until I eventually forked over a ton of money to Sony to buy a bunch of full frame cameras and full frame lenses. So at the end of the day, is full frame necessary? I don't really think so. Like I could shoot everything I do right now with an APS-C camera. N you guys wouldn't notice, my clients wouldn't notice but I like to shoot with full frame because I like to shoot with the latest and greatest tech. At the end of the day though, gear isn't what's gonna limit you. It's gonna be your creativity and your vision that really determines whether or not your videos and photos look great.